Well, we're here. Episode 2 of Moon Knight has came, and my goodness, is it an improvement from the first one? If you haven't seen my review of episode 1, I am very mixed on that episode. I think it did a lot of interesting beats, went to some interesting directions, but kind of fell flat in terms of a creative push to make this character relevant for fans of the character. And that's a weird way to put it. I am so connected to this character that when it goes away in a different direction than what I know, I kind of get lost in the kerfuffle and it becomes something I'm not a big fan of just because I know every aspect of this character. Seeing it done in a way that I haven't seen before can sometimes scare me. But it shouldn't scare me because every comic book that comes out for this character with a new creator doing a new run is different than the previous one. So I kind of had to like subvert my expectations a bit and be like, no, this is its own interpretation too. And when I did that, so I had a week to think about it. I did that. My thoughts on the first episode softened a little bit. I still don't think it's the best of the two, but this one is a great improvement. I have one criticism kind of so far of the overall series, and this is something I think we'll talk more about as these episodes go on. Currently, one of the things I'm not really liking about the show is its interpretation of the disassociative identity disorder. It's presenting it in a way that I th it feels authentic and it feels real, but you should straight up say it as opposed to just toying around the idea where it's going to be like a big reveal to being a thing that Mark or Steven has. Like, hey, you actually have this sickness called DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. You should say it from the beginning. And not make this a big deal because this is a mental illness and people are afflicted by it. Don't present it as like this big reveal for a character. It's like, oh, this is what's wrong with him. This is where his journey begins through this psychological trauma. It's just be like, no, he has this issue. We're going to be dealing with it throughout the show. We're not going to make it a big part of his character. It's just a part of his identity. That's what I think they should do. We haven't really seen that. The other thing kind of in terms of that aspect of the character I was worried about is like, how are they going to present the DID? Is it going to be when Mark gets killed? It like awakens something in him and suddenly he becomes crazy? Suddenly his personality split? No, it's not that, which I am really glad they did. Because there's some, there's some people out there, and I'm not going to say who or like just call shit or anything. There's some people out there, some people who are interested in this character and don't really know everything that might think, oh, it's when he becomes the avatar for Khonshu, his personality breaks. When in actuality, in modern comic continuity and in previous continuity, Mark Spector has been depicted as having the disassociative identity disorder since he was a young man or a child. That has always been the case. Long before Khonshu came in to corrupt him, he's always had that thing in his brain taking him to these different personalities. It feels like that's the route they're going because you see a scene where Mark is talking to Khonshu and you're like, you said he wouldn't get in the way, meaning like, oh, they had to have a conversation about Steven before these things happened with them, which is a really cool element to explore. And I, I hope they portray that more and more as the show goes on. So you'd think we'd pick up right where we left off or like maybe we'd see the events of this episode from Mark's perspective. That's not the case. We awaken this episode in Steven's bedroom again, and now he's getting fired from his job because we're seeing some security footage and we do not see the Jackal, which is a great idea. And it kind of does something that this character needed, where it's like still all in his head in essence, but there are certain people that can feel and see the aspect of that. So you get this sense like, oh, because Arthur Harrow was connected to these Egyptian gods before, he understands the world at play here. So he kind of sees what Mark and Steven are doing. That's really cool. But regular people, they don't know. So it looks like a crazy dude having a breakdown in a bathroom. That's pretty fun. I like the way that is portrayed because it feels very interesting. And that's a creative choice that makes sense for a character. When you want to do just like an easy route of, oh, somebody's crazy, you just make it so they're seeing things nobody else can. And that is presented later on in the episode with them actually getting chased by the jackal again. And once again, only he is seeing it. it it's working well. You see kind of like, okay. Now Steven and Mark have to have the conversation, and these are getting better than they were in the last episode. Oscar Isaac is doing a great thing. I I'm not going to say it's like as good as what Christopher Reeve did when he did his Superman stuff, but there's just a subtle difference in his performance when he's Mark and when he's Steven. It's the way his face drops, it's the way his presence stands. He's just a little bit taller when he is Mark, and I think that is an incredibly smart choice to make for this role because you can do the voice distinguishes perfectly but as an actor you want to be like physical and change yourself in that way 
the way he's handling it, it's really cool. And I do really enjoy that. So when they're yelling at each other, it's really fun, really interesting. When they go to like the storage locker, my goodness, that is a tremendous scene. Steven finds, you know, some information. He's like, oh, this is a, a lock to some storage unit somewhere. I got to find out what it is. The guy already knows who Steven is. When he gets into the storage unit, we get another QR code for you to scan. You can get your free comic. Last week, we had Werewolf by Night, issue 32. You could get it if you scan the QR code that was in the museum. This time on the storage unit, you can scan the code, get your copy of Werewolf by Night, number 33. Very cool. A great idea. Just such a fun thing to do. I love they're doing that. But once they go inside the storage unit, you see Steven sees the, the ID for Mark Spector, all this cash and these weapons. It's cool. And it's something that I know some fans might get annoyed by where it's like, oh, Steven is new to the world. I thought this too. It's like, oh, Steven's a new idea. It feels more like he's been pushed aside for so long and Mark has been the prominent force. That's a good idea too. I think that's a smart one. And it's like this idea, Mark has been operating for a long time. He has built his identity, built a world around everything, and now he's telling Steven, you have to let me get control. I have to stop this. You have the scarab. Let me f fix every problem we got here. And the way they are, oh, I love the way Oscar Isaac's yelling at himself. It is just brilliant. It is cool. It is intense and powerful, and it's a brilliant performance. And I know we're only two episodes in, and we don't have as much, like, scenes or anything compared to other people in the MCU. You don't see this. And I, I hesitated last week to say this show is really like breaking norms when it comes to like what the show is about and like how it's so different. I'm feeling it now. You don't get this scene in Marvel. Not, not often, at least. You don't get the scene where there's literally something psychologically broken about the hero before they become the hero. You have the arrogant ones who are like, oh, they have to be humbled and learn a lesson. But this is different. This is a man who's like, I have to get in control of this body. You are a loser who is ruining our lives. Please give me control once more. But Steven is fighting away from him because I'm going to assume there was some traumatic event somewhere. Whether it be when he is Moon Knight, when Mark is Moon Knight, that snaps him into the less prominent persona and suddenly Steven is in control of that. I think we'll learn a little bit more about that. There was a fantastic scene, a fantastic scene. I I really love the editing on this, and I love the use of lights and shadows in this, where Steven is running down the corridors of the storage units, and you just see like the flickering lights of Conchu following him and attacking him. I think that's great. That is so good. They this looked amazing. I was hesitant with F. Murray Abraham as Conchu. I'm sold. He's doing great. I love later on the episode when Harrow's talking about Conchu. They nail it perfectly. I really like the way that they're presenting Conchu in here is just kind of like a dipshit who can't get his shit together. And all the other gods are like, this guy's an asshole. <laughs> Why would we deal with him? He sucks. And he's got all these stupid guys running around trying to be his avatar and shit. It sucks. <laughs> I love that. Because that's accurate. Conchu should be like just the dirtbag. He's just like the teenage dirtbag of the gods. Just a guy nobody really likes and nobody cares about him. Like, that is him. It's brilliant. It's such a great use of that. We also get introduced to Layla. Now, this is going to be a point of contention for a lot of people. And there's going to be more to talk about when we get to the points of contention. Layla is an amalgamation of a bunch of other characters. You could say she is... I don't know. There's a character from the earlier comics in the 80s that has, like, her last name. They really changed some stuff up. That's fine. I don't care. If she is taking over the slot of Marlene, I can live with that. I can live with that. May Kalamawe is very much that presence you need. She is still subtle in her performance from what we've seen so far, but very commanding. I got vibes of, like, Rachel Weisz from the Mummy franchise. That's kind of, like, what I felt with what she was doing here. And that worked really well. So she finds Steven. They run back to his apartment. And we get a little bit of, like, an info dump kind of on the history of Mark Spector and her. We do get confirmation that Layla and Mark are married. Fascinating. Interesting choice. They don't mention a kid. I could see that maybe coming up later if they do stick together. But this goes into something I've been saying for a very, very long time when it comes to superhero stuff. We skewed away from it for a bit, but I think WandaVision really pushed it back into contention for something you should do. 
let superheroes be in romances. Let them be married and have people they love. And not just like, oh, you're my friend and I love you. Like, no, I would die for this one because I love you. You know, that is what we need in superhero comics. Those have been steeped into the characters since their beginning. You don't have Clark Kent without Lois Lane. You don't have Bruce Wayne without Selena Kyle. You have to have the romance in there. You gotta put them in there. And Layla's a great addition because she's clearly fed up with the shit Mark is pulling, but she did eventually love him. She has divorce papers for him, and Steven's like, I would never divorce a woman like you. When she's reading, like, you know, the ancient, like, scrolls and everything about Egypt. It's so good. It, it's just really fun, and I like that a lot. Like, that's working really well. And eventually that does lead to Steven getting captured by Arthur Harrow in a brilliant scene that's pretty much just like laying out his plan. It's kind of minority reporter where it's like, we're going to stop crimes before they happen, baby. Okay, sure, you do that, buddy, because that's never went wrong before in any aspect of the world. <laughs> it's a great scene where you just see Ethan Hawke's character is just relaying everything we know about Moon Knight and explaining it to everybody that we see before. He's talking to Stephen like, it must be hard having all those voices in your head, telling you certain things, behaving in certain ways. You know, you've got you in there, you got Mark in there, and Conchu. Conchu's a bit of a shit, isn't he? Yeah, he's kind of a little bit of a dick. I love it. That's great stuff. And he's like, I'm with Amet now. I was his avatar before, which is a lie. Don't freak out. He's lying to Oscar Isaac, okay? Arthur Harrow was not actually the avatar. And if it is... Who cares? That's just a small beat. It doesn't matter. He's a Femet now. He's like, we can stop this stuff before it happens. Like, if you just give me the scarab, I can help all these people. Look at what I'm doing here. These people have finally have like a place to be. They have clean water. They have food to eat. They are healthy. They are happy because they are part of my cult. They're doing good and they are thriving. Because Conchu sucks. And that's the point they are really driving home. Conchu sucks. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> I love that because he is. Kanchu is not revered in any aspect of these gods, and it makes Mark look like a dipshit for liking him so much, and Mark doesn't even like him, he's like, I can't believe I have to work for such a loser. I love it, that is such a great portrayal. And this leads to the big fight scene, it's looking very good, very interesting camera work here. This episode was Moorhead and Benson, okay, I like it, you guys have a history in doing some horror stuff and psychological stuff. It's looking great. I did like the way this was directed. I like Muhammad's episode too. I think that looked really well. This one just looked a little more clean, and I think that's okay too. It's all great. It's all great. It's all great. I do like it all. This is just a little bit better. So this leads to probably what's going to be the biggest point of contention for fans and people who think they understand a certain characterization of the Moon Knight character. Steven has to summon a suit, and you see that Layla's like, summon your suit, dude. Like, come on, I've seen it, it's got the cape and everything, bring it on, let's go. He does summon a suit. He jumps out a window in a superhero landing kind of way, and he appears as Mr. Knight. The suit looks fantastic. It's blowing my mind, actually. I never thought we'd get Mr. Knight this soon. And some people might be like, hey, this is inaccurate to Mr. Knight. To those people, I'd say, who gives a shit? It's not inaccurate. He is a tough guy. He is doing, like, the characterizations. And also, Stephen Grant has no idea what is going on. So, yes, as a guy who is so insecure that we've actively seen having jokes and sarcasm as a defense mechanism, of course he's going to do the Ali quote. Of course he's going to roll up his sleeves and look like a stupid guy trying to punch a jackal. That is accurate. That is what we've seen in his character so far. So I'm not upset by that. It looks good. It's accurate to what we've seen this character do. There's nothing wrong about that. The suit looks fantastic. I love when he's just like, oh, I have to fight you now. And he pulls out the sticks. He's like, these are cool. I'm kind of like a badass. And he rolls, oh my God, when he rolls up the sleeves, that was awesome. Just punches the jackal. They get into a huge fight. And then finally he's like, okay, Mark, you can take control. And it pushes Steven out pretty much throughout the rest of the show, I'm going to imagine. That was amazing. Now, I was reading these tweets that were presented by Jeremy Slater, who was the showrunner for this, and he was talking about, like, kind of, like, why they decided to change the way Moon Knight turns into his costume. Basically, he said a couple of things. There's some quotes going around, like, we don't want him to be like Batman, which I completely understand. You want to distance yourself from the Batman and create your own identity? I think that's a good idea, too. He was also, like, it, it doesn't make sense for, like, Mark to, like, change back into Mark from when he was Steven, go run to find his costume and then like come back. So if we can just like, you know, have it appear on him, that's easier. 
can't fault you for that. So they were talking about like the natural mummy look and that's where kind of like the Earth X version and it's like, hey, why don't we just mix the two together and create like the Moon Knight look wrapped in mummy bandages? And I'm like, okay, that works too. That's a pretty cool idea. So that is kind of like the basis around why this happens to Moon Knight. And I, I can't complain about that. I think it works just fine. You know, it, they're doing an interesting idea where it's like, hey, when Steven's in control, it's the Mr. Knight suit. When it is Mark, it's the Moon Knight costume. That's kind of cool. That's an interesting idea. I do have a theory I want to talk about at the end here. We'll, we'll get that to the end. But we have a nice scene where Mark is in control. He's running across the rooftops in a beautiful fashion. The suit does look a little clunky in CG. Even the Mr. Knight suit kind of looked that way. I think it'll get better. But they're running across the rooftops, and he just kind of, like, beats up the jackal and stabs him on top of a pillar. And then we get another nice scene where Mark and Steven are screaming at each other in a window, and Mark's like, I need control of this, you have to let me do this. When this is all done, and we get Layla away from Conchu because Conchu wants her as the next avatar, you can be in control, I don't care. But they just start screaming at each other, and he just breaks the glass that Steven's looking out of. It's brilliant. It's so cool. I love it. It's really good stuff. It really is. <laughs> I love the way Conchu is presented here too, where he's kind of like looking on the rooftops and every time we turn the camera, he's peeking around a corner, just hovering over every character in every scene, trying to get Mark or Steven to do something. It's cool. That's what I wanted. That is right there from my favorite runs of the character. Just that evil Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder, working with its psycho Colonel Sanders. It's awesome. It's awesome. And it's working really well. I do like that. And then we kind of end the episode of Mark like, fine, I will help you get through this. We can get you back in the realm with the gods, Conchie. But when that's done, we're over. Steven's taking control. Layla can be on her own. You are not touching her. Where are we going next? The globe trotting starts because we're headed to Egypt, baby. Shirtless Oscar Isaac for a minute, baby. Let's get more of that, please. Come on, do it. And we just kind of like end with Steven inside the mind of Mark, and Mark is kind of like our main focus, and now we are in the world of Egypt, we end with some really nice music, it's kind of like, I don't know if this is Egyptian music or not, but it's very interesting, and that's where the episode ends. Great action, great camera work, great use of the villain, great use of establishing the world, and naturalistically setting up the identity inside of Mark and Steven as being these two people that coexist. I wish they just said, you have disassociative identity disorder. I'm sure we're getting that in the episode that's supposedly like the Lemaire run, but it's still fascinating to me that this is where we're going. It's working well so far. I do like that, and I do have a theory I do want to bring up at the end here. So people have been talking about this. In the first episode... Okay, in the first episode, the woman says, like, hey, Steven, I can't wait for our date. And he's like, what date? And she's like, oh, the one at the steak place. Now, a couple of things about that. So, Steven doesn't know the date set up. The girl would notice if Mark didn't have the accent. This leads me to think there is the secret third personality that neither Steven or Mark know about, which is Jake Lockley. Now, my theory is... We're not going to be seeing Jake Lockley through any of this, but at toward, I, I'd say at the end, if there's a post credit scene for a post credit scene, I think the post credit scene is going to be Jake Lockley. And it's just going to be, we're going to see Mark enter a cab, but he's going to enter to the driver's seat. He's going to put on a fake mustache and suddenly he's going to be Jake Lockley in a different type of accent than what we see him doing with Steven. Maybe it's going to be a little more aggressive. Maybe it's going to be a different type of accent. I think that's what we're going to do with Steven. I, I mean, I think that's what we're going to do with Jake. That's how we're going to introduce him, just set him up as the next identity that is kind of built after we kind of like finish this story. And maybe he's always just been dormant. Who's to say? Very cool. Very fun. Also, the gold guy's Crawley. Can't believe I missed that. I don't understand why you found a way to shut up Crawley, but you did. And it works cool. Because this episode, you start to see him move. He kind of moves a little bit when you see Stephen hug him. I think eventually we're just going to have that guy just like burst out like, dude, you have so many issues. I don't know how to help you, but I saw a weird moon man jumping across the street and I'm guessing that's you, hon. I think that's where we're going. I really like this. I think every actor was on point. Oscar Isaac, Mae Kalamawe, and Ethan Hawke were doing fantastic. A great use of Khonshu, a great use of Mr. Knight and the Moon Knight costumes. It's setting up a really interesting story that is establishing itself from a different type of character from Batman or even previous installments of Moon Knight. It's just pretty strong. I'm not hating this at all. I think it's doing a pretty good job, and I am liking it. This episode was way stronger than the first one, and I cannot wait to see what is coming next from this world and these characters. 
So that's going to do it for this review of Moon Knight Episode 2. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. Oh, demon. Face the vengeance of the Moon Knight.